What is up, villain nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today we begin our talks on the Fathomless Warlock, the one that draws its power from the depths of the sea. Uh, we've already had something like this with the Great Old One, sort of, but uh, it was more the space-themed tentacle monsters, and now we are going more towards the sea which is uh, really cool a very interesting way to spin this but is it any good let's find out today but before we do make sure to leave a like on the video subscribe if you haven't already also make sure to share the video with your friends and of course click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded now this is a very interesting subclass right the the more famous version of this really was the great old one which we'll be talking about here in a few weeks but that focuses more on your space alien tentacle monsters, right? Your mind flayers and that kind of thing. This takes a different approach and takes a more nautical theme by looking to the ocean. So you have things, mainly the biggest thing that I think of is a kraken, but of course there are some other things that you could make work with this. You get access to using tentacles to smack your enemies around and possibly defend you from damage. So seems pretty cool in that way, but Let's see just how it compares to the other options. As always, we're going to start off by talking about the expanded spell list. Just a reminder that these spells are not automatically known by us. All warlocks have access to a specific list, but they do have to be actually taken in order to use them. So this list here that you can see is actually pretty darn good. All of these spells honestly are useful in one way or another. Creator Destroy Water has many applications. Thunder Wave is a great get off me tool. Gust of Wind has plenty of applications as well. Silence. Awesome uh, control spell definitely is great for shutting down other spellcasters, and there are other options as well. Lightning Bolt and Summon Elemental, Cone of Cold, all of those are some great uh, damage options. Sleet Storm, of course, is some nice little battlefield control. And same thing with Control Water. Big B's hand is very versatile and can do a lot of things both in and outside of combat. Uh, there's really not a bad spell on this list, and it's it's kind of weird to say that. I would say Summon Elemental is probably the worst one, and that that's really saying a lot because Summon Elemental is really not that bad. Um, so yeah, uh, there really isn't one that I truly dislike on this list. I would take pretty much all of them, honestly. So that means we gotta give this a 10 out of 10. This this list is pretty fantastic in all situations. And I, I think that you can find a use for all 10 of these on pretty much any build that you go with. At level one, we also get a couple of features. And the first is Tentacle of the Deep. This allows us to summon a tentacle and smack people around with it, which is kind of cool. So as a bonus action, we can create a 10 foot long tentacle at a point that we can see within 60 feet of us. It lasts for one minute or until we do this again. When we create it, we can make a melee spell attack against one creature within 10 feet of it, and it deals 1d8 cold damage and reduces the speed of that creature by 10 feet until the start of our next turn. This will increase in damage to 2d8 at 10th level. We can also, as a bonus action, move the tentacle up to 30 feet and repeat the attack. We can do this a number of times per day equal to our proficiency bonus and get all of it back on a long rest. This is actually pretty cool, right? This reminds me a lot of Spiritual Weapon. Uh, now, while the damage obviously does not scale like Spiritual Weapon would, this is a little bit more free in that it costs us nothing, right? We, we get this a number of times per day equal to our proficiency bonus, so two for now, and eventually it will be six, assuming that we go far enough. And this will, of course, scale whether we are keeping going in Warlock or not. So if you want to just dip one level into this just so you can smack people around with a tentacle on any build, here you go, you can do that. And that's that's a ton of fun. I, I, I don't know why why you wouldn't wanna do that, right? Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty cool feature. Uh, it gives us some really reliable bonus action damage. And so you might be thinking, well, why would I use my bonus action for this when I've got something like Hex or something like that, right? You can do both, right? Hex, you go ahead and set it up, do your thing, and then this can come right after that. So you can do both, which is a, a really good thing. Uh, it combos well with pretty much everything that you want to do. Uh, there, there's really not a whole lot of bad to this. It's just kind of free to go around and 
hit smack people around, which is which is cool. The, the worst thing about it is that it's cold damage, uh, but I mean, that's really not even that bad either. So overall, I gotta give this a nine out of 10. I think it's pretty solid as, as a free feature pretty much at level one. I, overall, it's, it's decent damage. It doesn't really take up a lot of resources to use. I like it, it's pretty good. Also at level one, we get Gift of the Sea, and this gives us a swimming speed of 40 feet, and we can breathe underwater. Now this is pretty cool, actually. I, I don't think that this is a bad thing to have in the pocket, especially if you are doing something of nautical theme. Uh, if you are in a nautical themed campaign, obviously this makes a ton of sense. Really, the, the conversation is more so, how much is this applicable to a normal campaign that may not be so you know, centralized on water, right? And honestly, there's gonna be water all over the place, right? At least for the most part, unless you're out in the middle of a desert for some reason, you're gonna find bodies of water and you can breathe underwater, you have a swimming speed and having a swimming speed is super important. Being able to move around, actually make attacks and that sort of thing. Uh, it's very restrictive if you are underwater and cannot swim. It's, it's, it's really bad for you, actually. Uh, the only thing that's kind of weird about this is that you can also gain this by an invocation. Uh, Gift of the Depths also gives us basically this um, so any warlock can grab this essentially uh, but you know invocations we only get so many and we don't necessarily want to waste a slot if we don't have to if i was going into a nautical campaign as a different warlock i might consider taking that invocation but i mean th having this for free is really not that bad of a deal overall i gotta give this an eight out of ten these are useful and and i i can see us using these whenever the situation comes up, but it may or may not be, you know, daily or at least every few sessions. At level six, we get Oceanic Soul, and this is an interesting feature. It's kind of a ribbon feature, sort of, uh, but we'll, we'll see. It, it gives us resistance to cold damage, which is cool. On top of this, whenever we are fully submerged, any creature that is also fully submerged can understand our speech and we can understand theirs. Now, it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily say specifically that you have to be submerged in water. Uh, it says just submerged. So there might be some weird things that you can figure out with that, but I, I don't think this is the place to get too far into that. Uh, but gaining resistance to cold damage is fine depending on the campaign. It's not overly common, but it's also not overly rare. So eh, like it's, it's okay. Um, and then the fully submerged thing, that, that's just a ribbon feature. Um, how often are you gonna be fully submerged? It depends on your campaign, uh, but most of the time you would hope, probably not that much. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know how much this is gonna be useful. Overall, this is a six out of 10, like it's fine, but as far as ribbon features go, I definitely could see it being a little more useful. Also at level six, we get Guardian Coil, and this is going to allow us to use our tentacle in a more defensive way than just offensive, which is pretty cool. So with this, whenever either us or another creature is within 10 feet of the tentacle, we can use our reaction to choose one of those creatures and reduce the damage by 1d8. This then gets further reduced in a few levels at level 10 at the same time that our damage would be increasing to that same amount. I, this isn't bad, right? I, I, I don't think that being able re to reduce damage is a bad thing. It is not as good as forcing disadvantage. It is not as good as boosting AC. It, it's, it's not as good as those things, right? It, it's in no way is it gonna be quite to that level. Uh, but if you're gonna take a hit, taking a little bit less of a hit is always gonna be a little bit more helpful than, than nothing, right? Um, so ultimately it's not useless but it's, it's not gonna be insane, and obviously this is going to scale worse and worse as you get further and further away from that 10th level slot. Um, so, eh, overall, I'm gonna give this another six out of 10. I think it's fine, but I, I think that it definitely could be much improved based on what it is. I would like to have a little bit more of a radius for it to catch you. That way you don't necessarily have to be standing next to the tentacle at all times, uh, but overall, it's fine. At level 10, we get Grasping Tentacles, and this is a very unique feature. It basically gives us a free spell and then adds on a little bit of extra to it, but is it worth it? We'll see. So with this feature, we get access to Ivard's Black Tentacles, and this also counts as a Warlock spell for us, but does not count against what we have known. We can cast it one time without using a spell slot, and we can do that again after a long rest. Whenever we cast this spell, we actually also will gain temporary HP equal to our Warlock level, 
and concentration on this spell cannot be broken because of damage. This is an interesting feature. Uh, I think if Art's Black Tentacles obviously makes a lot of sense for this subclass, uh, why would I not want to have this spell? Um, but is it worth a 10th level feature? I don't, I don't know that it necessarily is. The temp HP is nice. You know, we're getting at least 10 temp HP is good. And not losing concentration on this is actually a pretty good thing. Uh, if our Black Tentacles does want us to maintain concentration for a decent amount of time in order to get the full benefit out of it. So this could be, this, this could be very, very helpful and very useful if you're being attacked while, you know, holding down a certain area with this feature. Overall, I don't think that this is a bad thing. Uh, we can cast it once without using a spell slot. Otherwise, we can just use our spell slots to cast it. So we're only limited by how many spell slots we have, which is pretty limiting, but we do get one for free, which is also good. Overall, I think this is an eight out of 10. I think it's, I think it's good. I don't think it's anything broken. I don't think it's anything insane, but still good. Finally, level 14, we get Fathomless Plunge. And this is probably one of the most unique teleportation features that I've ever seen in anything Dungeons and Dragons related. Very weird, but as an action, we can teleport ourselves and up to five other willing creatures within 30 feet of us. We can then move to a body of water that we have seen that is pond size or larger, as long as that's within one mile of us. Then we cannot do that again until we finish a short or long rest. Uh, the, there, there are so many weird things about this feature, right? Uh, they, they were probably like, well, we need something else. We want teleportation and we need it to be water themed. Uh, so let's just make sure you can teleport to a, a pond. Uh, you're gonna have to talk to your DM as to what constitutes a pond, quote unquote, because uh, you know, if, if the water's flowing, you can't teleport to it, even if it's as deep as a pond, is that true? Um, or if it's if it's just a whirlpool, would that count if you're on the outside of it? Uh, there, there's there's plenty of situations where I feel like this is kind of sticky, uh, and I and I'm not I'm not sure how your DM is going to uh, going to go with that. But essentially, I think the the whole thing is that as long as you're not trying to teleport to a puddle, then you're okay. I don't know. Talk to your DM. But either way, this is kind of your your get out of jail free card. This is your get out of somewhere dangerous or get into somewhere that's dangerous, right? So you could, if you were looking down into a valley, maybe into the center of a town and there's a pond in the middle of the town and you're, you can see it from a really far, really long distance, then you could teleport to just straight into the town if they've got all these walls and stuff. So it could be infiltration in that way, uh, but also could just be your get out of there. I, I stole what I needed to steal. We're out, you know? So there, there are plenty of ways that you can make this work. And, and I think that it can definitely come in handy with some strategic planning. And of course, as long as geography is on your side. So with that, I think this is going to get an eight out of 10. It's very specific, but I think it is broad enough to where you can find uses for it in several situations. So what do we think of the Fathomless Warlock? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I really thought upon you know, hearing about what this was, I, I really thought that this subclass was going to be really bad. I, I thought I was going to have to fix it and, and that they had messed it up, that it was a little too pigeonholed on the water theming. That, that's really what I thought the issue was gonna be. Instead, I found something that is actually a lot more versatile than what it really sounds, and it's not pigeonholing you into an aquatic themed type of story at all. Does it work in those settings? Absolutely, it works great because then you get to use your breathing underwater, you get your swim speed, all that stuff comes up all the time, it's great. However, this works just fine in a normal campaign as well. And that is something that I think is awesome because the flavor is super, super cool. Mechanically speaking, this is our third one that we've covered so far. Um, I, it, It's kind of hard because I think, at least to me, when I look at the upper echelon of these, I, I ranked the Archfey at an eight. And to me, I think that it's pretty dang similar I, I, as, far as, as far as power goes. I think they're very, very close to each other. Um, this one may edge it out by just a little bit, but I don't know that it's enough to really round it past. So I'm going to grant this an eight out of 10 as well. I just think with some of the lower level features being either really good or just kind of mid, especially at the sixth level range, 
it's kind of tough, right? And then of course your 10th and 14th levels features, a lot of people are not going to get to that level. So those can't carry as much weight. And so that leaves me pretty much where we left the Archfey, which is not a bad thing. Overall, they're both usable and they have plenty of good things going for them. So that is the ranking. Let me know what you think down below. Did I, you know, go crazy with it or, or is this not enough? Just, just let me know down below. And of course, we're going to be building one of these later on this week. But until then, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.